Good afternoon, you wee bastards, and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala, and welcome to the final video in a series that started over six months ago. And then got put on hold for the past four. Yes, it's the Light Tank and Armoured Car series, a collection of videos discussing and advocating for the introduction of new scout-capable vehicles to War Thunder, along with some adjustments to gameplay and game mechanics to emphasise such vehicles' unique playstyles and diversify the meta of the game. Previously in the series we've discussed Britain, France, Russia and America, and now, after four months of waiting, it's time for the most heavily requested nation, Germany. And yes, I apologise for all the pronunciations I'm about to butcher. If you haven't seen the rest of the videos in this series, or are unfamiliar with what the series is, basically we're suggesting a whole bunch of light, scout-capable vehicles like the FV-101 Scorpion, Panhard EBR or Sprit SD that could fit into the game going briefly into their history and statistics and proposing where they could be put in the game as far as battle rating goes. Now I know, I know, fix the game, fix the game, stop adding new vehicles and just fix the game. But remember that these videos are more for discussion and entertainment than full on demanding that these vehicles and mechanics make it into the game very soon. I don't have that power anyway obviously, but I just want to point out and suggest what vehicles and mechanics I would like to see if Gaijin wants to consider them, why I'd like to see them and why I think they deserve to be added to the game in future. And you lads can respond as you wish. If you agree and like these suggestions, leave a like, share this video around on forums, etc. If you want to suggest something different or extra, then feel free to discuss in the comments. And if you straight up think I'm wrong and none of this is relevant or good at all, then I hope I can either convince you otherwise or just entertain you with a few historical spotlights of vehicles you may or may not have heard of. I began doing these videos primarily to advocate for British light tanks. What can I say, I'm biased. Because they're so lacking throughout the tech tree in scout vehicles, even though the British were famous for their use of armoured cars and reconnaissance tanks, and have a multitude of incredibly well-known models that would fit in the game and improve British lineups with light support vehicles. I didn't expect the videos to be so popular among viewers then, but with such an overwhelmingly positive response and discussion, it became its own series. Either way, we were definitely going to cover Germany, because next to Britain, they're the nation most lacking in light tank support and scout vehicles in the tech tree. I still say that we should get a patch whose main focus is the addition of British support vehicles only, and reworks to the scout mechanics, for reasons I went over specifically in the British video, and it's about now that I should say that if you've not seen the rest of the videos in the series, the playlist will be linked below and there will also be cards on screen. I decided I'd structure this video a wee bit differently to the rest in the series however, as there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the addition of more German light scout tanks and armoured cars, as well as my wanting to cover the changes to game mechanics and why I think they should come. So what we're going to do first is go over all the vehicles to be added that we're going to feature and a wee bit about them, and then talk about the new mechanics I want to suggest and adjustments in the fundamental game in order to fit these vehicles in and make them more fun. And finally, with that discussion out of the way, go into what battle rating these vehicles should be placed at and why. The different sections will be timestamped down below, so you can feel free to skip to them if you wish or watch this video in parts. And without further ado, Schnell, Schnell! The first vehicle on this list is the Sonderkraftfahrzeug or SD KFC 222, or the Leichte Panzersparwagen, literally light armoured reconnaissance vehicle. Developed back in the mid to late 1930s as a replacement for the SDKFZ 221, which we already see in game, the 222 increased the crew to 3 with the addition of a dedicated gunner and brought a higher horsepower engine. Two different variants of the 222 existed, the ARSF A and B, differing only in engine and armament. The SDKFZ 222A mounted a 75 horsepower engine, giving it a top speed of 80 km per hour and was armed with the KWK-30 20mm autocannon, which had a fire rate of 280 rounds per minute. This is the same gun as seen on the German reserve, the Panzer II-C. As of 1942, the engine and gun were swapped out for improved versions. The SDKFC 222B received an 89 horsepower engine, giving it a top speed of 90 km per hour, of course that's on paved road only, and mounted the longer 20mm KWK-38 cannon, with a fire rate of 480 rounds per minute, as seen on the Panzer II F, the German Tier 1 AA vehicles, and the premium SDKFC 140. Four wheeled armoured cars with 14.5mm of frontal armour, these vehicles were used all the way through the war, with some 2,000 being produced between 1938 and 1944. 
Not only did Germany use these vehicles, but 15 were also used by China, and I do believe Gaijin plans to add them to the Chinese tree at a later date. A similar vehicle, the SDKFC-232, was armed with the same gun as the 222 a Keep in mind that these guns differ in fire rate, but, at least in what they're currently, have the exact same penetration. The 232 was an 8-wheeled armoured car with a top speed of 85 km per hour and more armour than the 222 series at 30mm, making it enough to protect against 50 cal rounds from the front at 100 meters. This was the most advanced armoured car in the world at the time of its introduction, and Germany would field over a thousand of them during World War II, also later modifying them to become the very famous Puma. Next up, we're talking about a tracked vehicle, the Panzer II L, or Lux. I wasn't quite sure whether this one fit, because Rank 1 vehicles in War Thunder do not get scouting, even if they are light tanks or armoured cars. Now, I've suggested in other videos in the series that Rank 1 wheeled vehicles could get scouting, while tracked ones don't, but this is, of course, a tracked vehicle. I do think the looks should get scouting, however, because it was designed later on during the war specifically for the reconnaissance role, and therefore it fits on this list. After all, if I left it off, I know you'd all scream at me that I'd forgotten it. If the looks has to go into Tier 2, despite not quite having the BR to match, then so be it. After all, the French have a 1.3 light tank in rank 2 that ended up getting scouting just because their early ranks are so bad. The British, on the other hand, have a 2.7 light tank without scouting because it sits in rank 1. You know, because Gaijin really likes to make sense. Anyway, the Panzer II Lux, infamous to anybody who's played World of Tanks, was built from 1943 to 1944. It featured an overlapping wheel system similar to that of the Tiger and Panther, and was the only Panzer II to enter series production with this design. Over a hundred were adopted into service under the alternative designation Panzer Spa Wagen II, which once again literally means armoured scout vehicle. So yeah, it should get scouting. It had a top speed of 60 km per hour and was equipped with the same KWK 38 20mm autocannon with the faster fire rate from the other late Panzer IIs I mentioned earlier. Next on the list are actually four similar vehicles, two I want to suggest for premiums and the other two for the tech tree. Let's start with the premiums. These are vehicles I've actually suggested in this series before, the French Panhard 178 and 178B. The 178, also known as the AMD 35, was built in 1937 and when the German Blitzkrieg pushed through France, a large number were captured and used by the Germans, some 200 units. Now, as I've talked about these vehicles in the French video, I wouldn't go too in-depth here. The 178 or AMD 35 is already found in the French tree at tier 1 with a 25mm gun, while the 178B differed only in armament, featuring the 47mm cannon seen on the Char B1s. In the German tree, these could make interesting linked premiums, similarly to the Sherman Calliope and M2016-99, the F-89B and D Scorpion, and the Boomerangs in the British aviation tree. For the tech tree, let's look at the P204F, which is the German designation for the 178, and there are two variants of this that fit in the tree, which are German modified variants armed with German guns. The first is the 50mm KDBK38, which is the gun seen on the Panzer III F and J, and the second variant mounted the KWK39 gun, which is the same 50mm gun found on the Puma. The shorter 50mm has 80mm penetration on its APC round, with up to 116 on its APCR, and the longer L60 version has 106mm with the APC and 130 with the APCR. But who uses APCR, am I right? All four of these captured French reconnaissance cars have the same maximum speed of 72km per hour on road. Jumping up a wee bit, we have the tank I'm sure you're all expected to see from the very beginning, the Sparpanzer SP-1C. This was a reconnaissance tank prototype developed in the late 1950s, with a strange design. This vehicle's hull is incredibly tall in proportion to the overall vehicle. As for armament, the SP-1C mounted a Merca 90mm gun identical to the one found on the French AML-90, which means a 320mm penetrating heat FS round, also identical to the one the RU-251 fires. In fact, it was probably the same round. Only ever built in prototype form before the project was scrapped in 1962, this tank had a top speed of 58 km per hour, making it effectively a slower RU-251, although I expect with such a small, cramped turret, it would also have a slower reload. This vehicle is one that's long been requested, but of course it was only ever a failed prototype, 
so unfortunately may end up another premium. Let's move on up the tree to the very famous Marder 1A3. Now, I'm not sure entirely why German players are so up in arms about this vehicle being added to the game when you already have the Big Light Panzer, an IFV built on a Marder chassis with a far better 57mm cannon, at least for our purposes in War Thunder. But my Discord especially will kill me if I don't talk about it, so here we go. A comparator to the Bradley, BMP or Warrior, the Marder began development as far back as 1960 and would go on to enter service in 1971. The Marder 1A3 entered service in 1988 and became the quintessential variant of the vehicle, which is still in use today. Compared to the other infantry fighting vehicles seen in game, the Marder would mount the smallest and weakest offensive gun, a Rheinmetall 20mm autocannon, which is not stabilised. However, it could be tied with the Warrior for best missiles and enough armour to stand up to Soviet 30mm rounds from the BMP at 200m and its own 20mm ammunition at point blank range. Now, I'm not sure exactly how much penetration the 20mm has on its rounds, it should be in the range of 60mm, with around 75mm of effective armour, but with an insane fire rate of 1000 rounds per minute, that gun could shred cannon barrels in seconds, allowing you to take your time and launch a Milan missile. That is very good, as you only carry 4 of them, another reason I'm not so sure why people seem to want this in game so much. Of course, I'm only assuming it would fire the Milan 2 variant of that ATGM, same as the Warrior, and it also has thermal optics. It has a top speed of 65 km per hour, a tad slower than the Big Light Panzer, and would probably be the worst of the IFVs in game, besides the BMP-1. Last on the list are two wheeled vehicles, basically equivalents to the Centauro Romor Type 16, and the Vickers Viper or M1128 Striker we mentioned in previous videos. The TH-400 was a six-wheeled reconnaissance vehicle developed in the mid-1980s. Capable of a whopping 115 km per hour, these would be some of the fastest vehicles in-game and some of the most well-armed. The TH-400 can mount two different turrets, either a Leopard 1A5 turret with its 105mm L7 rifled gun, most likely firing DM-23 APFSDS as seen on the Leopard A1A1 and TAM, or a turret with the 120mm L44, likely firing the 120mm DM23. This is similar to the B1 Tintoro, which also has a variant with a 120mm gun, and I'm not certain, but I can only assume both of these variants have access to thermographic optics. If the 120mm variant did get DM33, it would be very comparable to the M1128 with its 105mm M900, and depending on what rounds the Centauro 120mm could get, that one would also be equal. Well lads, that's it for the list of vehicles themselves that could be added. Of course that isn't every option, there are more such as the Puma IFV and East German BMP2 is fair game, and you may notice I did include the Rad Panzer 90 on this list for anyone who was expected to see it, and that's because there was only ever one prototype built of that vehicle, and it didn't work. <laughs> There's also the Panzer II J, which was technically a light tank, although with the armour and mobility of a KV-1, and the VK-1602 Leopard, which like the E-50 or E-75 for example, never left the drawing board. Oddly enough, since the last videos in the series, Gaijin actually went ahead and added two of the vehicles I had planned to suggest, the East German BMP-1 and West German M41 Walker Bulldog. I'm sure there are others as well, so feel free to let me know in the comments, but now that we have a list of vehicles to implement, how do we balance them? Where do we even put them? Germany already has 5 lines of grind vehicles, plus premiums. Well this is actually why this video has taken me so many months to get out. I was actually waiting to first get out the grind problem video, and if you've watched that one through, you'll have seen my proposed solution to said problem, which involved using more extensive folders to tighten up the tech trees. With such a system of folders in place, we could join the two lines of tank destroyers into one, folder the Panzer 35 and 38 together, then the Panzerjäger and Stormpanzer in the same line, then all of the Stugs into one folder, then the Marder 3s, the Flakbus can go in the AA line just like the Russian Jag-10 is in theirs, because, you know, Flak, then the Jag Panzers, the open top TDs, etc, etc, leaving only the light vehicles like the Puma, the German M41, TAM, etc. 
I suggest we put the BMP-1 into the line after the Jagdtiger, but not connected to it, just like the Big Light Panzer is now, and make a line of BMP-1, Marder 1A3, maybe an East German BMP-2, Bagel Panzer, and then the Puma IFV if that were to be added as well. Five vehicles, and then put the TAM over in the new Light Tank and Scout Vehicle line. Then we also have room for the new vehicles, but to work out where they sit, we're going to need to talk about the changes to game mechanics as far as scouting goes. Scouting right now is pretty pointless. It doesn't offer much in the way of team game playing tactical advantage, nor does it come with much earning. So in order to make this collection of vehicles more worth adding, more worth Gaijin's time, we're going to also propose some overhauls to the game itself around the aspect of reconnaissance. I personally love the idea of light tanks and specifically scout oriented vehicles having more that sets them apart, so I've suggested some buffs to the scouting ability and to certain vehicles which we'll go over in a second. Why? Because putting more emphasis on these factors not only increases the potential benefits of team play, something worth under desperately needs, but makes the game feel more extensive with new and improved mechanics that give different players different abilities and add a higher level of tactical diversity, a higher skill ceiling. These mechanics however don't run the risk of overwhelming new players who don't have to learn them right away if they don't want to. Everybody wins. It also requires light scout vehicles to be placed higher in battle rating, which helps to do two things. One, for what it's worth, it puts some vehicles at more correct time frames relative to other tanks. A lot of the really late war, post war or verging on modern vehicles that sit among much older counterparts are these light scout vehicles, like the AMX-13 which fights T-28s and M3 Lees, the M3 Bradley which fights IS-3s, or the Italian R3 armoured car, which was literally developed after the M1 Abrams was, and yet variants of it fight Shermans and King Tigers, or even the AA gun version, which for some reason sits at the same battle rating as this thing and fights against Panzer 3s. Once again, I state, 80s vehicle, younger than the Abrams, fights Panzer 3s. Welcome to War Thunder. Now that SPAA already deserves a BR of probably 4.7 at least, because it's hilariously overpowered in so many ways, but it also might be the only AA vehicle that could get scouting, which with the buffs I'm about to propose, could make it capable of something like 6.3, much better for those earlier vehicles who no longer have to deal with it. The second thing that happens if you raise the BRs of vehicles that have scouting is that you help bring an armor meta back to the mid-tiers. Because these light vehicles are so lightly armoured and such little emphasis is placed on their utility, they get put lower in the tiers than they should and end up with godlike penetration for their BR. This makes them just as good as any other tank at killing enemy tanks from the front, which is a wee bit strange. If we buff them and subsequently raise their battle ratings to match, for example putting the M24 Chaffee up against Tiger 1s, they end up with subpar firepower for their tier, giving everything else at their tier much more reliable armour. Seriously, an AMX-13 that's meant to be a 6.0 light tank can lol pen a 6.7 heavy tank like the King Tiger or Carnarvon from the front, and beat them to the cap, run circles around them, out-reload them, scout them, etc. It should be higher than them if it can do all that, not two steps lower. So first the buffs to light vehicles in general, the first two of which are easy and that's buffing slightly the performance of wheeled vehicles off-road, seriously they're not that slow. Armoured cars were designed specifically to be better at handling off-road terrain than tanks, perhaps not necessarily faster, but not much slower, at least over average terrain. It's only sand, snow or mud that would really slow them down so much. Secondly, give the wheeled tank destroyers the scouting ability to improve their support class kind of nature, which Gaijin actually already went and did, so well done, good on you, have a medal. I also suggested giving wheeled vehicles at tier 1 the ability to scout, as opposed to tier 1 tracked light tanks which don't get the scouting capability, which for Germany means the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 221, the 222s and 232 we suggested be added, and we already covered the looks. The next buff would be an indirect one that involves map design. Now, I could go on for days about Gaijin's map design and why I think it sucks, but the main suggestion I have here is more roadways. Proper roads that lead sensibly and realistically around the map to give more of an advantage to using them. Right now they often either ring around the map encouraging spawn camping, that's bad, 
or lead right into its centre, which is also very bad for a scout car with subpar firepower and no armour. Like the scout mechanic itself, if you lean more into this feature, you create a deeper and more extensive experience. Bigger maps would be good, especially at high tiers, to allow these vehicles more space to manoeuvre, and lastly, some locations on maps that certain tank types just can't get to, like bridges only light tanks can cross, hills and mountains heavier vehicles can't climb up, nothing overpowered or imbalanced, but something that sets those vehicles apart more, like specific locations they can use to scout an enemy team from a high vantage point and also somewhere they're more likely to come across each other. World of Tanks has all of this, and for all you want to say about that game's model, its economy or its developers, the meta of that game is hmm, spot on. Playstyles actually mean something, and even two same tier light tanks can function completely differently because the game allows them to shine in different ways. That leads us onto the buff to scouting itself, starting with rewards. If we're going to buff scouting, making it more tactically relevant and important, and therefore raising the BRs of scout vehicles so that they aren't nearly as effective at regular tank warfare, then we need to increase the rewards a scouting playstyle brings. Scouting right now is kind of pointless as I said before, just a consolation prize to offset the fact that with light tanks often having less punch or less post penetration damage, you can get a lot of assists, and thanks to the airstrike modification it's also a cheap way of getting into an aircraft, which I don't necessarily agree with but we'll talk about that in a moment. The reward for just hitting the scout button is fine as is, just a few silver lions, similar to the reward you get for simply taking off or landing in an aircraft. Raise that anymore and you run the risk of encouraging players to just skirt around the whole battlefield and scout enemy tanks moving out of their own spawn, which is firstly a waste of a vehicle and secondly is of no use to the friendly team and shouldn't be encouraged. Scouting that proves useful to the team however should yield much higher rewards than it does currently, allowing players to adopt a primarily reconnaissance based role and still finish a good match with a worthy chunk of research points and silver lions. Currently, if a tank is damaged by friendlies while scouted, you earn some SL but no RP, and frequently what ends up happening is that that tank can be damaged while scouted by you, but not killed by friendlies until after that scout timer runs out, meaning you get no RP at all for that. Even when scouted targets are killed, you don't get nearly enough RP to actually make a purely scouting playstyle viable, further discouraging people from making use of it. Actually, when you land an aircraft you get rewarded RP, not lions, and you get more RP than you do for a scouted target being destroyed, just for landing on the airfield. That shouldn't be the case. If a scouted target is destroyed, it should yield the same result as a kill assist in both silver lions and RP, and could definitely just be counted as an assist. While if a scouted target is damaged, it should be about 80% of that reward, at least in my opinion. So a good scout, someone who's providing solid intelligence to the friendly team, could earn just as much SL and RP as a good medium or heavy tank player for instance. Equal contribution and therefore equal reward. That kind of reward system only works though if the team is actively paying attention to the targets you're spotting for them, which frequently, at the moment, they're not. Currently, when targets are spotted, they become visible on the map as a flashing icon, revealing their location and tank type for 20 seconds, and a chevron appears above that tank in game, regardless of how far they move during that time from the location they were pinged at. What I suggest though is that in addition to the strobing icon, a line would be spoken over the radio, target spotted, when you scout the tank, from the same person who says, attention to the map, or cover me, etc. This one will be automatically triggered however, so you wouldn't have to worry about people constantly spamming it like they do with some of the manual commands. This makes it far more likely that other players will pick up on the fact that you've just given them the location of a hostile vehicle and react to it accordingly, which puts more emphasis on that strategic form of play, especially if you're in a tank destroyer for instance, getting reconnaissance from a light tank. The light tank could move to a further away, overwatching location, specifically to be a scout, which is a historically accurate use of a light scout tank supporting a cavalry unit. For that to work however, we need to extend the range of scouting. Some months ago, Gaijin changed scouting to have a maximum effective range, which can be buffed with the improved optics module. 
However, those rangers are still so poor that most often you cannot actually scout targets if you're in these sorts of overwatch positions to scout targets. Yeah, do you want to go back and try that one again, Gaijin? What I propose is that we make the range of scouting unlimited, so that, theoretically, you can scout targets anywhere on the map from any location if you can see them. I also suggest at the same time that we tighten up the sensitivity, meaning that your crosshair has to be directly on the enemy tank, so no more scouting targets you can't actually see anymore, either because you're behind solid cover obstructing your view, or they are, and no scouting targets when your crosshair is just somewhere in the general area of the enemy tank. Get rid of that, or else the unlimited range on scouting would be way too powerful. With unlimited range though, what happens to that improved optics modification? It no longer serves a purpose. Instead of removing it however, I think it could be given a different purpose, that when you have it unlocked, your scouting provides additional information to the friendly team, telling them what type of vehicle was spotted and where it is. So instead of that voice line just being target spotted, it might be, for instance, enemy light tank spotted at coordinate C3. The map coordinates would obviously have to be shrunk and have more of them on the maps because at the moment they're often large enough that the whole enemy team can literally be in the same square, which stops this kind of callout being useful. At the same time, the keen vision crew skill could be reworked, as in tank realistic mode it serves zero purpose. Keen Vision could extend the timer during which the target remains pinged, say from only 10 seconds when the skill is at 0, to 40 seconds when the skill is maxed out at 5, so each 0.5 extends it by 3 seconds. This would only apply on the commander, and the ace modification would have no effect. The cooldown on the scouting ability would be doubled, otherwise we run the risk of turning realistic into just arcade mode, which we don't want. And lastly, back to that airstrike modification, which reduces the spawn point cost of aircraft when you scout targets. I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense, because you have to remove your scout from play in order to see that benefit from it. I've talked about this in the past, but I think if tanks were able to bail out without incurring a death or repair cost, and being able to respawn in that same vehicle again, this would make a lot more sense. The idea that the intelligence you're providing by scouting is being used to call in air supports. Aircraft can bail out safely while stationary and fully repaired on the airfield, so I think tanks should be able to as well if they are fully repaired and not in close proximity to or direct line of sight of an enemy vehicle, without incurring a death or repair cost, allowing players to respawn that tank again after spawning something else, like an aircraft, without needing to buy a backup vehicle in the hangar and waste a ton of spawn points in the match. It would be as if you hadn't spawned that tank in at all in the first place. So, now that those buffs and reworks to the gameplay of scout vehicles are out of the way, and please let me know what you think of them down below, it's time to decide where all of these new German light tanks are going to go. This is assuming that all the buffs I've talked about do come into effect, which of course they probably won't, this is just a hypothetical discussion. But first, let's start with the existing tier 1 wheeled vehicle, the battle rating 1.3 SDKFC 221. Two man crew, 20mm smoothboard gun, which fires APCR only, 4 second base reload and 72km per hour. I think battle rating 1.7 would be perfectly fine, any higher and it stops being so useful. And at this tier, a lot of the light tanks like Stuarts and BT-5s are pretty insanely fast as well. The 222A, which was the first new vehicle we mentioned, actually fits at the same BR too. With three crew members giving it more survivability, a higher top speed of 80km per hour, and the 20mm autocannon with a 280 rounds per minute fire rate, you might think it should be higher up, say 2.0. That autocannon, however, has 30mm less penetration, and that value drops off almost immediately, with only 26mm penetration at 500 meters, making it difficult to even penetrate the front of a light tanks at 2.3 from range. The B variant could probably sit at 2.0, foldered in with the 222A, with the even higher 90km per hour top speed and 480 rounds per minute fire rate with the same penetration values, it is a direct upgrade. The SDKFC 232 would probably be in this folder too, once again at 2.0. With the lesser fire rate gun, but a top speed of 85km per hour in the middle of the two previous vehicles, 
enough armor to protect from 50 cal machine guns, and 8 wheels instead of 4, making it faster off-road. I think this fits as a side grade to the 222B. Now for the looks, the recon variant of the Panzer II. This one would probably only sit at 1.7, as it's slower than all four previous wheeled vehicles at 60 km per hour, but armed with that faster autocannon with the 480 rounds per minute fire rate. Its armour is Panzer II armour, which is to say non-existent, but it would be faster off-road than those wheeled vehicles. Either 1.7 or 2.0 would probably work, it's essentially a faster Panzer II F plus scouting, but the Panzer IIs are really only good when put into close quarters because they lose penetration so quickly at range, and this goes against the mentality of a scout. As a scout, it's less effective than the 232, but as a tank, it's really just a slight upgrade to the Panzer II F. The looks is kind of a weird one to balance, walking the line between those two playstyles, but that versatility would make me love it. The Panhard 178 and 178B, once again I already talked about in the French video, the 25 and 47mm armed variants which I suggested be linked to German premiums would be 1.7 and 2.0 respectively, although there is of course the likelihood of Gaijin just not adding them whatsoever, which I wouldn't mind, I just thought they were worth bringing up. The two variants armed with German guns, however, the KDBK 38 and 39, would fit much higher, probably 2.7 and 3.0 respectively. The Puma would go up, I think, to 3.7. It's already an exceedingly powerful vehicle, good enough for 3.0, and with the buff to scouting, 3.7 would fit well for it, with several vehicles at that BR to support it, but the ability to easily bring it into the amazing German 4.0 lineup. I should mention here that the two event variants of the Puma armed with 75mm guns would not get scouting, as they weren't used to scout vehicles, and so can stay where they are, although the Pac-40 variant could probably fit at 3.72, because it is at the moment kind of OP. The SP-1C, once again, a slower RU-251 armed with only a slightly different 90mm gun and an identical heat FS round, would take its place, actually probably fitting at 7.0, while the RU-251 would move up substantially. The SP-1C was, as I mentioned, only a failed prototype, and so might end up as a premium or even event vehicle. In the tech tree, however, we see the German M41, which would fit at the same battle rating of 7.0. This tank has a smaller gun, only 76mm, but is much faster than the SP-1C, and unlike the American M41A1, fires a heat FS round. It also comes with smoke grenade launchers, so I think with the scouting buffs, 7.0 is fine for it. The RU-251. Now, this might be a wee bit controversial, but people have long since said that this tank actually fits better at 7.7 than 6.7, simply due to the opponents it fights and the meta change in the game at that BR. Well, here's our chance to prove it. I've already thought that the RU-251 is a 7.3 vehicle, only sitting at 6.7 because the German 6.7 lineup is made up primarily of lumbering beasts that needed at least something light and fast to support them. They got the RU-251. Now we have the M41, or the SP-1C, to replace it, and with the bust scouting we went over in this video, the RU-251 could honestly sit at 7.7 .7 and be balanced. The German BMP-1, now this is a vehicle I suggested go over into the far line after the Jagdtiger, but not attached to it, same as the Bagel Panzer is now. The BMP-1 could honestly set at 8.0. With the upgraded ATGM at least, the BMP-1 is already on the verge of being a 7.7 .7 vehicle, so with the new scout mechanics, 8.0 works, it certainly wouldn't suffer there. Remember that all the other IFVs are also going up, the Bradley, BMP-2 and Warrior all to 8.7, etc. You may notice that I skipped the Jagdpanzer 45, which it and the Rakuten Jagdpanzer 2s are kind of strange. They are light, fast vehicles, but they're not scouts, and in my opinion should not get scouting. What we could do actually is move these three vehicles into the line after the Jagdtiger, but not connected to it, and then the IFVs would come after them, and could be connected to them. Once again, the folder idea I proposed in my grind problem video could come into play. We could easily folder the two Rakitin Jagdpanzers and then have the IFVs follow on from them. So the Marder 1A3, this would likely go at 8.3 and definitely should get the Milan 2 ATGM. If it didn't and only got the Milan 1, it would probably have to sit at 8.0 maximum. 
and with the other IFVs going up, there wouldn't be much at its tier that it could kill with its gun. Remember, this is the kind of vehicle that needs to see main battle tanks and support vehicles. If you pin it up against T-54s, IS-3s, M-103s and Conquerors, it really can't do anything with its gun, and it only has 4 ATGMs. Milan 2s would put it up at 8.3, which also gives it more vehicles its gun can penetrate from the sides at least, and I think this would be more balanced. If Germany were to get a BMP2, once again that would be 8.7, the big light Panzer 57 up to 9.0, remember it has a better fire rate than even the Bradley and a much bigger gun with much more penetration, along with a much lower silhouette, making it a better scout. The Puma IFV, if that were to come, would likely be a 9.7, because it uses Fire and Forget ATGMs, the Spike LR missiles, which are guided by thermal signature. Are we ready for Fire and Forget surface to surface missiles? I'm not sure. I did dance around this subject in the Russian light tank video, but I thought it was worth mentioning here. The Puma would also be immune to 30mm sable rounds across the frontal arc and travel at 70km per hour. I did suggest the M3A3 Bradley in the American video and the BMD-4M in the Russian one, so I think the Puma fits nicely alongside them. Back over then to the actual light tank line, we're going to put the TAM at 9.0. It could work at 9.3, but not until we get a battle rating of 10.7 so that it doesn't have to fight Leopard 2A5s and the M1A2s. Yikes. The TH400, however, would fill that spot, at least the one with the 105mm gun which, once again, is very comparable to the Centauro Romor and Type 16. It would fire the same ammo as the TAM, although for God's sake Gaijin, please not another APDS stock grind, but it would be much faster than the TAM on road at 115km per hour, and not a whole lot slower off-road. Of course, having 6 wheels and not 8, it wouldn't handle off-road terrain quite as well as the Centauro or Type 16, which is why I think it should go at 9.3 and not 9.7. The TH400 with a 120mm gun, however, well, that depends on what round it gets. With the 120mm DM23, 10.0 seems like a fair place to put it, but if it were to get DM33, then it could sit at 10.3 easily, and just as with the M1128, which I brought up in the American video, if battle ratings were to be decompressed to 10.7, this tank could be a 10.7 scout vehicle with DM33 easy. I think it's more likely it would just get DM23 though, and 10.0 would be fine for it right now. That also depends on if they have thermal sights or not, which I'm assuming they do, if not, knock each of them down another step or two. And that brings us to the end of this video. We've gone over all the suggested vehicles and some, talked extensively about the reworks to the scout mechanic and proposed balance positions for all the vehicles based on these new gameplay opportunities. I hope you have enjoyed this video lads, god did it turn out to be a long one, but once again there was a lot to talk about. Four months since I promised this video was coming, but again, I did want to get that grind problem video out first so that I could refer back to that solution of folders in order to actually fit it in the German tank line. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know with a like and a comment, let me know your thoughts on what I said here, and make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, join the 360 squad. I haven't said that in a while now, have we? Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, join the Coalition Forces Discord, and check out Patreon or hit the join button here on YouTube if you want to support the channel further, I really appreciate it. Thank you lads all so much for watching, have a lovely good day, and always remember, keep your bagpipes in one hand, whiskey in the other, keep your kilts on, and I'll catch you next time. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Rosekill, Metallic Green, Church, Crescent, Captain Fibar, The Britlander, Seagull Nuts, DA261, Latvian Wolf, Kisliga Darson, and Dark Recon. You lads are broad. Want to join them? Come check out Patreon at the link in the description below.